a medical procedure to protect women from cancer may be putting them at risk. According to research from Columbia University, a device used in hysterectomies could spread uterine cancer. It's a medical tool used to remove tumors in reproductive organs. The study supports a government assessment that concluded using that device is risky. And joining us to talk about this is Dr. Devi Nampian Parapol. She's from NYU's School of Medicine. Doctor, it's good to see you. It's Thanks see for you being again. with us. Let me, let me just ask you, what is this device and what does it mean? Well, so the device is called a morselator, and the idea behind it is that you're cutting up fibroids. That's the problem that it treats to basically remove them from the person's body. So the idea here, a fibroid is an abnormal growth that a woman can get, and it can cause symptoms. It can cause pelvic pain. It can cause bleeding. It can sometimes cause infertility. So it's a large growth in the uterus. Now, you might want to remove the fibroid itself, or you might want to remove the entire uterus through a hysterectomy. And there are different ways to remove it, but most of the time, you want to try to get it out through as small of an incision as possible. So this device basically breaks down the fibroid or the uterus to remove it through that small incision. It's like moving when you try to break down your furniture a little bit. And how is it spreading the cancer? Well, so the idea is that anytime you break something down, you can get debris. Just like if you break a plate or a glass, you know, there's a lot of shreds and shards that fall around. So when they break the fibroid up, there are pieces that can actually fall into the belly, into the abdomen. And now if one of those pieces actually contains a cancer, the thing is that it can later grow in the belly itself. Is, 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 it, is it an indication it's getting into the bloodstream as well or not? Uh, it's not necessarily getting into the bloodstream, but it's actually in the abdomen. So you can have this abnormal fibroid or an abnormal and cancer. And it starts growing. to grow right there. Exactly. And it's hard to tell because the thing is with cancer, I mean, we usually find out about cancer when it reaches a certain size or when it starts causing problems. But a lot of us, you know, not to be alarming, but might have a cancer cell or cancer cells in our bodies, but our immune system actually takes care of them and destroys them. But if they're actually left there, a person might not really realize until it grows to a certain size and causes problems. So what, what do you tell patients and, and what should patients do if they have some of these fibroids? Well now that we know about this research and actually even before the FDA issued a warning, but women who are having this procedure done using a morselator should know about these risks. Now the risks are higher for people who are older above age 50 than they are for people who are under age 40. So you know they can make a decision knowing the different facts, but some people are arguing that this device should be uh, eliminated entirely from the market. So yeah. you, that would just mean you'd have a larger incision or not? Yeah, so you might need a larger incision because you actually have to get the fibroid out without breaking it down. But I mean, there's a possibility people could find other ways to use a device. Just like, let's say you're painting in your apartment, you know, you might put down plastic or some type of sheet to catch the debris. Well, you could do the same thing in the belly. You could actually insert a plastic bag or something along with the device to catch uh, the remainder of the fibroid, you know, these breakdown products, and then remove it all together. So you might take care of the cancer spread, but we have to advance the technology a little bit. So as a result of this study, do you expect new guidelines for doctors? I think there will be new guidelines probably about the use of the device. I mean, they're debating it right now in the FDA whether or not to continue its use, to restrict it, or to ban it altogether. But yeah, I think either way, patients who have had this procedure done, you know, they may want to follow up with their doctors to find out if there's anything else that should be looked at. It's important information, Doctor. Good to see you. Yeah, Thanks nice to again. See you too.